started you on your way, you're clothed in your right mind, you're able to walk and talk and do whatever you desire to do, amen? amen. What a blessing, amen? Yes. Amen. And you will have the victory, amen, yes. if you obey God's word, amen? Amen. Amen. Right now, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Is there anyone this morning who has a special request for someone or something that you desire from the Lord? He said, let your request be made known unto God. Yes. Amen? amen? So if you have a special request, you can stand now or just simply by raising your hand. Sister Cora. Praise the Lord. Thanks. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. everywhere. Pray for our leaders everywhere. Pray for man, woman, boy, and girl in all walks of life. Pray for all those that are sick with the corona that God will bring, raise them up. Amen. Amen. And when they, when God raises them up, pray that he'll give them him the glory. Amen. Yes. They clap and clap for the nurses and the doctors and if God hadn't given them the wisdom and the know how to take care of them, they wouldn't have come out. Amen. So let's pray that they'll start giving God some of that glory. It belongs to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. There are not, no other requests? All right, we're going to ask everyone to stand. Saints, don't stop praying for the Lord's time. Saints, don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. Lord, asking that you continue to strengthen them, Lord, 
in his spirit, soul, and body. Send him a word this morning, Lord, that he might feed your people in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask that you let your word build us up, Lord. Build us up, Lord, for the days to come. Hallelujah. Strengthen us and keep us in thy love. Oh, Lord, we'll praise you. We'll give you the glory, the honor, Lord. All belongs to you. And we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ask you to turn to the first division of Psalms. It reads as thus Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff of the wind, driving, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a song from our praise team. Give us one song, please. Yes. Amen. Our musicians out of town, pray that God will grant them a safe journey back home. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God.
our God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, we're going to go before the Lord in a short praise service. Amen. I know that God has been good to everybody, and everybody can't tell it. So we're going to ask those that did, God has done something in their lives. Amen. We ask that you'll stand now and let it be known. Amen. Because that thing that you went through and God gave you the victory over, it wasn't just for you. Amen. It was for everybody that's here in this room. Amen. Even our audience out in Facebook. Amen. They want to hear. What has God done for you? Amen. Amen. Who will be the first one to praise the Lord?
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You saw the best in me when everyone else around could only see the worst in me. Hallelujah. He saw the best in me. Yes. When everyone else around could only see the worst in me. Hallelujah. He saw the best. The best, the best, the best. He saw the best in me. Hallelujah. When everyone else around could only see the worst in me. Anybody here that somebody ever told you you ain't gonna amount to nothing? Anybody ever tell you you ain't gonna stay in the church long? You won't be there for a long time. Hallelujah. But look at all of us in here who have the can't help us. And we've some of us been here 40, 30, 20, 10. You know, we've been here. And, and that's because Jesus saw the best in us. I remember I used to go to work and I used to do my boss so bad. And I, I'd cuss him out and tell him I ain't doing nothing because him and the other girl was sitting there just talking and they thought I was going to do all the work. I said, I ain't doing nothing until y'all start doing something. And I'd just cuss him out because that was the old me. And he, he wouldn't say nothing. He'd just sit there and look at me. And I said, Lord, I should have been fired a long time ago. Cussing this man out all the time like that. Telling him what I ain't going to do. But he needed me. I was a good worker. Amen? So he put up with it. And he just shaved his head. But when I got that Holy Ghost, I went in there and I told him, I said, Dave, I got the Holy Ghost. He said, what's that? I said, that's the Spirit of God down on the inside of you. It brings about a change in your life. It brought about a great change in your life. He said, uh, oh, okay, so you're in the church now. I said, all right, well, good luck. And I heard him tell the girl, I give her three months. Well, it's been almost 45 years. Almost 45 years. You see, when you fall in love with Jesus, it's the best thing that you can ever do, amen? The best thing that you can ever do in your life. It's to fall in love with Jesus. I fell so in love with Jesus, I think I fell out of love with my husband. Amen? If it's, a, if it's such a thing. Because nothing else really mattered. Amen? I just wanted Jesus. 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 Amen? Oh, hallelujah. But you know, we have a lot of zeal with no knowledge sometimes. I think if I had to put a little time on my husband, he might have would have come to church, you know? But I was just into my Bible praying. God has to help us sometimes. Amen? Yeah. He has to help us. So he did help me, but by the time he helped me, it was kind of late, you know? I was just, all I wanted was Jesus. When you really get the Holy Ghost in your life and you see what it can do for you, you just want more Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Deacon Fields, I'm sorry. Go ahead.
All sin is just sin. The thing, she was on drugs. He was selling drugs. I had a filthy mouth. I was a liar. And, 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 and God's sight is all the same. So in none, can't none of us look down on any of one of us. You know, because God don't look at your sin as being bigger than mine. Or mine being smaller than yours. It's all sin. And he meets us all right where we are. Amen. And brings us into the fold. Amen. I enjoyed her testimony. And I enjoyed his testimony. And like I said, it said it's just something about that deja vu. Amen. God will bring you back. He said, you remember me? She said, yeah, I think I remember you. Yeah. But God will do things like that. Amen. Amen. That's just like Jesus. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. Amen. Nobody, nobody. So if you got him in your life, you better hold on to him. I don't care what comes. I don't care what goes. You've got eternal life abiding in you. So you better hold on to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody turn you back. It ain't worth it. Amen. Hallelujah. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I ain't seen nothing yet I want. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm just so glad about Jesus today. Amen. So glad for each and every one of you. All that's filled with the Holy Ghost and all that's not filled with it, you want to be filled with it. Amen. But that's your power to live right. Amen. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Like right now, we're going to change the order of our service. And we're going to ask Deacon Fields if you'll come up and uh, collect our morning's offering. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want everybody to give. Amen. We're in a new building now. Amen. Amen. We, we need your tithes and your offering. Amen. Your 10%. Amen. God can't bless you if you give 3% of what you got. Uh-uh. That ain't what he told you to do. He said 10%. Amen. Hallelujah. He let you keep 90 so you shouldn't have no problem with that. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to give God 10% of all that he has blessed us with. And we're going to pay a, a, a love offering to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because y'all enjoying this building, aren't you? Hey, ain't it beautiful? Amen. So we're going to bless. Amen. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you bless this offering. Bless all those that give, Lord. Bless those that don't have to give, Lord, that they might have to give. And bless and so into your kingdom. And we'll praise you, Lord, right now for the victory. We ask that you continue to bless Christian ministry. Yeah. Now, that we might change hearts, change minds, and cause people to want to be saved. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. amen. Ask everyone to stand in your respective places. And Deacon Fields will come around and you can get it for it. Thank you, Jesus. If you give unto the Lord, he will give you more to give. Some more to give. Some more to give. If you give unto the Lord, he will give you more to give. He will give.
Amen. We had a good prayer the last time we were here. Inviting everyone to come out. You need to pray. Amen. Amen. And we're living in some hard, bad times, so we need to pray. Amen. Amen. So asking everyone that can and will to meet us here Friday at 6 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Now, without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to some and to present to others our beloved pastor, Bishop Frankie L. Quinn. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Everybody say, Hallelujah. Yeah. testimonies that we heard here on today. You truly inspired my heart. Hallelujah. Yeah. Take me back. You take me back to when the Lord first saved me. Hallelujah. Yeah. It'll take you back from where the Lord first saved you. Yeah. How he first illuminated you. Yeah. And how you were on fire for the Lord. Yeah. And every day with Jesus is sweeter yeah. than the day before. He just gets sweeter and sweeter. Somebody said he's sweeter than honey. In the honeycomb. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you can't get your heart in Jesus, you don't need it. Yeah. If you can't get your heart in Jesus, you shouldn't want it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We certainly do praise God uh, for our life, health, portion of strength. Yeah. Thank you and praise Him for just keeping us. Yeah. How many know the Lord is just keeping you? Yeah. He's watching over you. He's making ways where it's seen to be no way. Yeah. And we praise the Lord for our lovely wife, Lady First Lady Tracy Quinn. Hallelujah, thank God for her. We thank God for Pastor Duck. Amen. Pastor Lois Duck, we thank God for her. We certainly do thank God for Mother Louise being back in our midst. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. God is good, though. 
How many of we thank God for our deacons? Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. We thank God for Deacon Mitchell in the back. Hallelujah. We praise God for him. Oh, glory. We praise God for each and every one of you that are here on today. Come on, give God a praise for yourself. Seen uh, Brother Edward Duru, amen, here in our midst. 
Um, but it was, Brother Edward Dewey, it must be the season or something. Amen. He went down to, I believe it was Nigeria, and he claimed himself a bride. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, um, I don't know if he's back. I know that he's going to have to quarantine when he does come back. Um, but uh, he's been shooting me some pictures and showing me uh, his bride and things like that. And we certainly thank God that the young man is happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we thank God. Like I said, it must be the seasons. Davis has got married, and then the Clarks got married. Who next? <laughs> oh, it got fired on it. It got fired on it. <laughs> uh, somebody got to drink the water. <laughs> so we certainly do thank God. Uh, the Bible says that marriage is honorable and all. Amen. And the bed under five. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Amen. So the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. So we praise God for marriage. It's the sanctity of God. It's it's one of His um, one of His ordinances that He has ordained. And the Bible says that he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and favor of the Lord. Amen. God is in the marriage. Amen. Between a man and a woman. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Between a man and a woman, God is into marriage. So we want you to turn with us to the book of uh, uh, Hebrews, uh, chapter number four. And as we get ready to go into the Word of God, um, looking at uh, dropping down to verse 16, Hebrews chapter number four and verse 16. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And y'all do see Brother uh, Duru when he comes back, Edward Duru. Uh, du Ed Dura. All right. Amen. Dura. Thank you, Jesus. When you see him, um, congratulate him and his new bride. Thank you, Jesus. A hug on him. <laughs> Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Can we say that together? Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may mercy and grace to help us in the time of need. And let us speak this into our spirit and speak it into the atmosphere. Let us read it one more time. Let us, therefore, come boldly and find grace to help us in the time of need. O oh, gracious Father, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you for this anointing that is in this house. We thank you, Lord, for the word that is in this place. And we thank you, Lord, for those that are gathered together, not only in this house, but have gathered together in the virtual space. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you bless us. Bless us immensely. Send forth your word to heal us. Send forth your word to deliver us. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would grant us the door utterance, uh, that we may receive with meekness the engrafted word of God to the saving of our soul. Lord, bless us to believe your word and that we walk by faith and not by sight. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Just to read this particular verse of scripture one more time in our hearing. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help, to help in the time of need. Now, I just want to speak for a few minutes, half hour at most. Don't forsake your help. Don't forsake your help. 
The Bible says in that particular scripture, uh, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace to obtain help in the time of need. And our subject on today, don't forsake your help. Don't forsake your help. Amen. And when we begin to look at this particular passage of scripture in the book of Hebrews, you know, for anyone to literally receive help from God, and I'm sure that there's many people that are out here in, in, in this particular assembly and those that are listening to this particular sermon, uh, we want help from God. A person that is in their right mind uh, would desire help from God. And when we, we think about that in order to receive help from God, the, the first thing you must do is believe that God is. You've got to believe that God exists and that your God is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. The Bible tells us that faith is that substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And as we begin to understand that if I need help from God, I, I've got to believe that God is, that God exists, and that he is that rewarder to them that diligently seek him. And that word diligent really means to seek God with care, to seek God with care and a consciousness of what you want to obtain from God. God is not a haphazard God, and you should not be haphazard in your seeking after God. God wants you to be intentional. And to be intentional means that you've literally got to have your request in your mind and make your request known unto the Lord. God said, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and ye shall receive. And if you don't follow God's prescribed way diligently, you got to be diligent about it. You got to be careful about it. You've got to be conscious about it. Sometimes we we get into situations where we, we are not conscious of God being in our presence. That we are not conscious of God being uh, in our atmosphere. We make sometimes decisions without uh, acknowledging God. The Bible says, acknowledge him in all of thy ways and he shall direct your path. But life has its own way wherein we go about our lives just uh, in the background realizing God is there, but never having him come to the foreground. And, and when he's in the foreground and he's leading and guiding you, things will be much better. Uh, the scripture that the pastor read earlier in the book of Psalms, and it, and it said that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. You've got to make God your delight. And in his law, you've got to meditate day and night. God has to be in the forefront of your mind day and night. And if you make God the premier of your mind, he said, then ye shall be like a tree uh, planted by the rivers of water and your leaf shall not wither, meaning you won't dry up. Uh, you'll have the protection there to protect your fruit uh, that you bear for the Lord and whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. How many of you want to prosper in this life? How, how many of you want to prosper in this life? And you've got to be intentional about your seeking after God. You've got to not have God as an aforethought in your mind. And, and when you get done with what you're doing and it doesn't work out, you say, man, I should have acknowledged God. Man, I should have called on his name. I, I should have prayed. But God wants you to acknowledge him. Uh, so that he can direct your path. He wants you to put him first so that he can lead you and guide you. Nothing that we do in this life should be without the permission of God. Nothing that we do in this life in our lives should be without 
asking God first. Hallelujah. How many of you know you got to put God first? You got to believe that God is. You, you got to believe that God is a way maker. You got to believe that God is a healer. You, you got to believe that God is your strength. That, that God is our fortress. That God is a very present help in the time of trouble. You got to believe that God is. Say your neighbor, believe that God is. Believe that God is. And when you seek him, you've got to be diligent in your actions. You, you've got to be intentional about seeking him. Don't, you can't be willy-nilly about seeking after God. You can't say, well, I'll seek him today and skip him tomorrow. You can't say, well, I prayed yesterday, so I don't need to pray today. Hallelujah. You've got to pray uh, without ceasing. You've got to acknowledge him, hallelujah, in all of your ways because God wants to direct your prayer. The Bible, the Bible says that the steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. Uh, we need to be praying, Lord. yourself, the enemy has stole some things from you, uh, but you've got to redeem the time, so you've got to acknowledge God if you want some help. If you want God to help you, you've got to acknowledge him. I, I see my David, he often said, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I, I see why he wrote a lot of the Psalms because he was acknowledging God. And when you begin to acknowledge God, God can help you. Uh, when you begin to think back on what the Lord has done, the Lord can help you. You can't forget about the testimonies of God. You can't forget about his power and his grace. You, you can't forget about how God makes a way out of nowhere. that 
fallow ground and it's like a seed that goes into the heart. Uh, but when you don't have faith and when you don't believe what God has said, that word that has gone in your heart, it falls on dry ground and it falls on stony heart again. In other words, uh, right now your heart is being, uh, uh, how can you say it, cultivated uh, to receive the word of God. The praises have gone out. The anointing has come down and it, and it broke up that fallow ground in your heart. Uh, and now I'm preaching the word of God unto you. And some people in the room right now are paying attention. Some people in the room right now are receiving the word of God. Uh, but if you receive God's word and don't mix it with faith, don't, if you don't believe that this word is for me, that you've got to say that this word that is going out is for me and is going to change my life. And when I leave here, I'm to put it in practice. The Bible says that faith without works is dead and being alone. If you don't take the word that you're receiving right now, hallelujah, and mix it with faith and, and practice that word and remember that word, by the time this week coming next week, you'll forget all about what God has said. Your heart will be hard once again and you won't be able to bear the fruit of the anointed word that you received on previous time. Am I talking to somebody here today? Am I making sense here today? Am I giving you the understanding of why sometimes you fall short of the glory of God? It's not that God doesn't want to bless you. It's the fact that sometimes when you hear
your heart. The devil can't do nothing with you. If you give it in your mind, when the enemy comes in like the flood, the Spirit of God will lift up the standard of wisdom. If you get that word down in your heart, you won't be conformed. You'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you get that word in your heart, God is able to build you up. God is able to communicate to you in your time of trouble, in your time of need. If you get that word in your heart and hide it in your heart, you will ask what you feel and it shall be. Whatever you desire, just speak the word. Whatever you need, just speak the word. Speak the word, speak the word in the morning, speak the word in the evening, speak the word in the noon day, speak the word when the sun goes down, speak the word if you want joy in your heart, speak the word if you want to overcome the enemy, speak the word if you want joy unspeakable. Falling short of the glory of God. 
Made his footstool 
stools, expecting the enemies that come up against you to be made his footstool. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities and our, and our weaknesses, and, and he learned obedience to the things that he suffered. He has gone through some things that we would never go through. He has gone through some things that, that, that he has gone through that the world has gone through. Hallelujah. That, that, that he covered all the patience. That my God help me here, Holy Ghost. That, that, that you have your own struggle and you have your own struggle and you have your own struggle and our struggles are different. But Jesus has gone through each and every one of our struggles. And he came out with a victory.
was Christ that died. Yeah. It was Christ, yea, that has risen again. Yeah. And when he got up, he got up with all power. He got up with all authority. Yeah. He got up with all anointing. That's why the Bible says you got to cast down. Mm -hmm. Cast down. Yeah. High things. Yeah. Cast down the thought that you're no good. Yeah. Cast down imaginations yeah. that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and yeah. bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. And the way to do that, you got to come boldly to the throne. Yeah. To the throne of grace. Yeah. How do I get there? How do you get there when you call on the name of Jesus? He opened up the way. Hallelujah. He made the way. Hallelujah. He broke down the middle wall of petition. Hallelujah. He opened up the way. So when you call on his name, you're there. Hallelujah. And he'll give you grace. The Bible says that he will give you mercy. Mercy is God's unmerited favor. God will give you favor if you come boldly to the throne. Uh, there's no reason for you to be struggling. Uh, there's no reason for me to be struggling. Because Christ has paid the price. All you got to do is just believe. All you got to do is believe God's word. Hallelujah. And trust in his process and believe that God is. I see why. I see why people struggle. People struggle with faith. I see why the enemy attacks the faith of man. Uh, because he knows if you believe, he knows that if you trust him, that you'll not just be a conqueror, you'll be more than a conqueror. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise.
restaurant. Like what you are. 
Is there room for improvement? <laughs> so if you believe, that's the power of belief. If you believe that there's room for improvement, there is. Hallelujah. And God will send you a word to help you improve. Once it comes, you got to receive it and believe it and walk by it. Come on here, somebody. Let the church stand. If there's anyone here today that wants to get baptized in the name of Jesus, just let us know. Believe on him. As the scriptures have said, and the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah. Those that need the Holy Ghost, all you got to do is just believe. Believe that the Lord will give you the Holy Ghost if you call and ask in the name of Jesus. He wants you to have it. Uh, believe it when I tell you. He wants you to have it because you need it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He would behold no good thing from you. And whatever you're struggling with today, believe that you can overcome it by coming boldly to the throne of grace. Believe that Jesus was made manifest to help you, especially in your time of trouble. He that began a good work in you, he will finish it until that perfect day. Amen? What do you say to Pastor? That I'm in the body of Christ and I'm struggling with a whole bunch of issues and I don't know how and why I'm not getting the victory. Has the Lord left me? No! Because he hasn't completed the work in you. And the word says he will perform it until that perfect day. The reason why you haven't gotten victory over certain areas in your life is unbelief. It's unbelief. As soon as you believe, all things are possible. As soon as you say, Lord, I'm trusting in you. All things are possible. Yokes are destroyed.
forsake your help. Yes. The throne of grace. Yes. Call it on the name of Jesus. Yes. There's a whole bunch of this sermon I didn't get to. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all got 10 minutes? <laughs> 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 but I'm not Follow peace. With all men. Amen. Holiness without the rich. No man shall see the Lord. No Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, sanctify the hearts of these men and great women and children that are here on today. Yes. Lord, let them receive this word. Let it be embedded in their heart. Lord, let it follow them throughout this week that it may manifest in their lives. Yes. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. All right, tell somebody, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.